Hello everyone, today we're gonna have a look at the DW5040 PG-1 and... And this watch is... Well, different. Let me put some context. In comparison to G-Shock 35th Anniversary Project Team Tub Series model, that one have black IP hard case with gold screw down case back. This one have the other way around. The hard case with gold IP. This part is black IP. Just a fun fact for context again. During 30th anniversary for this G set series, one comes in full silver stainless steel hard case and screw down case back. One comes in black and gold. Same as 35th anniversary model. If you look for the G Shop 20. 5th anniversary, this is an example of that, gold IP and silver IP. If you look at the DW5000 SP for G-Shock 20th anniversary, the entire screw down case back and hard case comes in silver. So that makes this watch unique. Plus, this one has an extra step added to it. The stainless steel part with Japan sign at the bottom had been undergoes recrystallization process that introduced all of those tiny little grains in there that reflects light differently and thus give it more of a matte finishing look rather than the standard black IP like one of these, which is more of a fingerprint magnet. Anyway, not complaining, though I have to add something from wearing this watch so far. Well, first and foremost, it feels different. And even when you put this on wrist, this new recrystallized version feels slightly more comfortable than this guy. And that is a nice add-up. Next thing I need to point out, the watch band bezel also different in comparison to all of these one over here or the rest of this G-Shock watch in front of you guys right now. Well, aside, in exception for this metal part, of course. This one uses biomass plastic. I'm not sure what the ratios are because if you look at the code down here, it says PUR. So it is a polyurethane mix with biomass plastic, I guess. Probably that's the reason why it feels exactly the same. Not more comfortable, not less comfortable as far as the watch band and bezel goes. Though one thing that worries me is if the lifespan. This this one has been proven to lose two decades old, right? This one, I'm not sure. The biomass naming on there gives me a feels that it might degrade sooner than any one of this G-Shock watch here. Regardless, this watch still functions the same way like all of this other model over here. This is an example, DWE 5600. This is DWE 5600. This one 5610. Most of the G-Shock watch could pick up roughly around 100 bucks, maybe more or less, depending on which one you choose for. This one, $300. In my case, 310, slightly more. And then I have to add up delivery and of course the uh, import tax because I bought it straight from Japan using Power Japan down description box. So now, if you cannot find this watch locally wherever you live in this world, perhaps go to the link in the description box, support the channel, and you also could experience when I say that this watch feels slightly more comfortable than this. Alright? Other special thing, of course, all of this Project Team Tough related G-Shock watch. The side piece comes in gold. Gold buttons, gold screws, and I appreciate that a lot. And because KSL are experimenting with new things now, they add stars on the mode swap buttons down there. And that is a nice little touch. And this might change future G-Shock in the future. Maybe they could add some mode lettering on these buttons instead on the watch bezel. You know, like premium G-Shock watch, say like one of these, right? That is a possibility. Aside from that, something that I just noticed, this screw down case back, because it has these grainy properties on it, it reminds me of this forged carbon bezel taken out of this GWG 2000 Watt Master watch. This one is a bit rougher because of the chopped up carbon pieces but now we could achieve the same look without to pay extra just with this recrystallization method. That's an idea as well. Aside from that, I need to point out the thing. This is the watch band keeper also unique to this series only. Recrystallized gold IP metal. You could see since 1983 and four stars, which is not as visible as on the standard G-Shock band keeper like this because of how light reflects on the grains in the metal. Same goes with this Cast Japan sign buckle. Thumbs up for that, by the way. However, in my case, this is probably just me. I need to point this out. The letter O in the word Casio is not as visible. I don't know this. Everyone goes the same. Maybe it's just me or not. I have to point it out. Aside from that, I love this. Screw down case back, by the way. I have to point it again. So the entire watch is made in Japan, which is nice for collector and I guess the extra price point also adds up to that as well. Making this, you know what, I'm not surprised why this watch get as popular as it is when it was first released. And I do think this is far better in comparison to the previously released Project Team Tough G-Shock watch. Even though the function itself is just the same, no LED backlighting, still uses EL, but the rest, the hardware-wise, is new. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.